Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In last episode, we went about configuring iOS for privacy and if you've seen that episode, woo, there's a lot of things that we need to tweak to make our phone a little more private. Uh, like, I needed notes. I need to follow notes. I never need to follow notes for those episodes. It's that intense. If you haven't seen that episode, I recommend having a look at it and it will kind of set the stage to why things are not the way we want them to be on smartphones these days. But without further ado, let's talk about Firefox. Um, as you know by now, Firefox is my favorite browser. I have a bunch of episodes on Firefox. Uh, I think we're at like three episodes right now. If you haven't seen the ones on Mac OS, I recommend having a look. Uh, the key distinction between running Firefox on your desktop and on your phone is that on the phone, uh, Mozilla needs to obey a bunch of rules in order to be able to submit their app to the App Store. And one of those rules is to use WebKit and that is disturbing. That means that in order for Firefox, that ha Firefox has its own rendering engine, it's called Greco. In order to be able to submit their app to the App Store, they have to use WebKit. What that means is Firefox on iOS is essentially a glorified Safari. And it's they, they don't have a lot of uh, leeway. I mean, you cannot even install add-ons when you're using Firefox on your phone. So the key takeaway here is an iPhone should never be considered a private device. And the second takeaway here is Firefox on iOS is definitely not Firefox on your desktop. If you care about privacy and security, use your desktop. Your Mac runs Unix in the background, so you have a lot more control. It's way more hackable. But hey, we have an iPhone and we're stuck on it, so might as well install uh, Firefox versus Safari. So let's go ahead. If you pop open Firefox for the first time, uh, it's going to ask us to enable synchronization. What that means is Firefox wants us to create a Firefox account and sync our settings, our uh, bookmarks, I think they're called, uh, and things like that between our computer and our phone. What that means is your data is sent to their servers and it lives in their cloud and it then synchronizes. I have to give a shout out to Firefox for doing that the right way. Your data is actually encrypted on your phone before it's sent to their server, which means in theory, they don't have access to the data. Now, as I mentioned in the episode on setting up one password using local sync versus the cloud, I think that a sovereign approach is more favorable. You want to, you know, have your data in your phone, not, you know, lying in someone's data center. The reason why is if ever someone uh, is after you, well, they can subpoena that company and have access to the data. And once they have access to the data, they can brute force your password pretty easily using supercomputers. It's much harder if they have to have access to your phone. That moves the threat model from an infosec to, a, uh, to an OPSEC threat model. If you don't know the difference between InfoSec and OPSEC, I have an episode on that. I'll link it up here or there. I'm not sure which side it is and I'll put it in the description. Woo, that's a lot of information. Okay, so essentially we do not want to enable synchronization. Uh, once this is done, we want to go about start browsing. As you can see here, looking at the top sites, uh, obviously these companies are paying Mozilla to be there. I know that Google is paying Mozilla in the order of about $60 million a year in order to be the default search engine. So Google wants to be the default search engine and we're gonna change that pretty quickly. And you know what, I don't wanna have Firefox and you know, although I love YouTube, I wanna make sure it's compartmentalized. And since we cannot have add-ons uh, such as Firefox containers on iOS, well, you cannot compartmentalize things. So again, I don't recommend using your iPhone for private stuff. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and delete all of these top sites. Yes, okay, oh, one last one here. Now that that's done, you wanna hit the hamburger menu and you wanna go here and uh, go to settings. Uh, as you'll see, there aren't that many things that we can tweak, but you know, search engine, we should definitely switch that to DuckDuckGo. If you don't know what DuckDuckGo is, this will be the subject of a future episode. It's a search engine that does not log requests. If you're into that kind of stuff, smash that subscribe button and we'll get there shortly. We want to also disable search suggestions. What that means is while you're typing, it's going to suggest, suggest, it's going to suggest 
searches. We don't want that because we want to decide the moment that we want to search. If you start typing stuff and there's a typo and then it searches for it, it could leak intent and you want to make sure that that doesn't happen and then we want to disable all other search engines because you know what the only one that's proper is DuckDuckGo. Okay moving along uh, in mail app you want to select your mail uh, as you can see here I'm using the default mail app that will be the subject of a future episode I mean the whole space on email is quite fascinating and I have a bunch of content coming for you guys. Uh, moving along we do not want to offer to open copied links. The reason for that is we don't want Firefox to have access to our clipboard. Uh, logins and passwords, you want to go about disabling this. As I mentioned in the episode, which one was that already? Hmm. Anyways, as I mentioned in an earlier episode, uh, yeah, it's probably the one on configuring actually iOS for, for privacy. You want to use a dedicated password manager that is not designed or developed by the manufacturer of your phone, the operating system, or an app. So I recommend using a standalone password manager such as 1Password, there's a bunch of others. Anything besides this is good. So we won't be needing Touch ID and Passcode because you know what, we won't have logins in this app. And as I mentioned, you actually never wanna use uh, your Touch ID for anything else than unlocking your device. Uh, if you haven't watched the episode on setting up iOS for privacy, I'll link it up here or there and in the description and I recommend having a look at that. Um, tracking protection, we definitely want that enabled and we want the strict mode to be enabled and that might break websites once in a while or something, but it's, it's okay. If a website is broken by that, it means it's a piece of shit website that's invading your privacy and it should not be used in the first place or at the very least, it should be compartmentalized in its own Firefox instance and you know what, on Mac, it's something that we can do. We can run two Firefox instances side by side, have one with shitty, uh, you know, privacy settings for things that we need to compartmentalize. Woo, okay, tracking protection, well, that's good. If we're moving about here, we want to disable send usage data. Uh, that's like analytics. Uh, again, we don't want to send anything about ourselves to Mozilla, even though it's a company that I have a huge amount of respect for. Um, now that that's done, we're all set. One last thing. If you go about browsing here, it's going to remember all of your history and that's not good. I mentioned why in the episode on setting up Firefox for privacy. So what we want to do here, if we click on one and we click on the weird little things here, which I guess is some kind of a mask, we can switch that to private mode. And if we click plus, uh, now we can see that we're in private mode. It means anything we do here is ephemeral and that's the way it should be in my opinion on iOS given how shitty uh, you know the browser environment is. So if I go about you know searching for something, let's say I say you know sunnutzen.com uh, and I go on my website. Not sure why that's taking so much time. Hmm, anyways probably because my website is hosted pretty far away. Uh, so if we go there and we then click on the one here and we delete this and we start over, if I go about typing Sun Newton, I don't know why it's suggesting those websites by the way, but yeah, let's, I will double check if search suggestions are enabled. I'm guessing they're not, but as you can see, it doesn't remember that I went on Sun Newton before. So let's double check this setting once again uh, I'm pretty sure we disabled that. If we go in search, yeah, search suggestions are disabled. Ah, yeah, so as you can see, things are really not ideal here. We cannot even remove quick search engines. Well, anyways, that's pretty much it. That's as good as we can get it. Uh, remember to be in private mode. That's the, you know, once you configure things as we just did, you wanna always stay in private mode. When you start Firefox clean, let's do this. If I kill Firefox and I go back here and I open it, it's, oh yeah, good. So it remembers to be in private mode. Okay, good. Um, so I guess that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're into privacy and you're not a subscriber to this channel yet, smash that subscribe button and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.